So welcome back to another episode of Vander Cooks. I have a special guest today. Hi guys, I'm Danny. Um, I'm a culinary student from Orange County and today we're going to be making shakshuka, which is a dish I learned to make about two or three years ago. Um, I learned about it back in Israel when I was visiting for a student trip and sort of just studying the Arab-Israeli and Palestinian conflict there. Um, while I was there, this breakfast kind of changed my life because when I was there, I was vegetarian and I was very stressed about what I would be able to eat there because a lot of what I thought <clears throat> Mediterranean food had, you know, meat, lamb, chicken, fish, a lot of that. But this is great if you're vegetarian, you can even veganize it. I'm going to add some feta cheese into it, but if you omit that, it's totally plant-based minus the eggs. But, you know, if you have chickpeas, you can totally do that. I've done that before. It's been a hit. Um, so, yeah. All right, so I guess we'll get right into prep. Yes. So what do we need? A cutting board and a <laughs> Oh, I should have brought my knife sharpener. But, yeah, give you it a try. Told me. <laughs> so right now we're starting off with the onions and garlic and the serrano pepper. I think you can use like a regular chili pepper, but I like the taste of the serrano pepper because it's a little bit more sweeter than a jalapeno, but it definitely has that hotness, that sweetness to it. A jalapeno is a little bit too harsh for me for this very like mild dish, especially with like the eggs and not really like part of the region either. So this dish, basically any Middle Eastern or North African culture will claim that, that they created this dish. All I know is that it comes from somewhere in the region. I have some family background from Morocco and they'll claim that it's Moroccan, but I, I found it in Israel, so. Okay, so that's the onion. So we're going straight in to the pan? Well, it definitely takes a, a while for it to build the flavors. I like to layer on the flavors, like first get the onions and the garlic sort of like softer and more aromatics to sort of blend them into the oil. This is definitely not a harsh dish at all. Lots of flavors, but easy on the stomach. <laughs> we don't really have to cut up into like small pieces because I like finding ch chunks of garlic. Especially when they're cooked, it's not too strong of a flavor if you find a big old chunk of garlic. They become like sweet after cooking. I have like all of the aromatic spices, but for the actual like building of flavor with fresh vegetables, we want we want something like this. Not too much. Like I said, it's a, a pretty mellow uh, breakfast, but you want something to definitely give you something to taste. I love white pepper because it doesn't like if I want to cook something like a hollandaise and add pepper it's not like the black little dots in it that make it look dirty but you know it tastes like pepper but it doesn't look like nasty I brought extra so that it can still look nice with the mise en place Let's start on our spices. I don't put them in any order, like spices are all the same size, so like who cares how much they're gonna cook. Oh, and I don't ever measure spices. Onion, just to like reinforce the onion taste, but like a dried onion will never be as harsh as a fresh onion. So like even if you add a ton, it's just gonna have like this weird onion flavor, but it's not gonna be like fresh and as crisp as you want it to be. So don't use it a lot if you're trying to get that fresh flavor. It's just gonna taste like a cup noodles or something. <laughs> Cayenne pepper to keep it spicy, obviously. Thyme. Cumin, if you're a vegetarian or vegan and you love that savory flavor because I personally do not like sweet things, you know, with sugar and it's not because I don't like the calories, it's because I literally don't like the flavor. Cardamom, just to round out a lot of these flavors. Turmeric for that beautiful color. Chili powder for extra flavor. Cinnamon, I like to add this to sort of curb the cumin and keep it a little bit softer. Allspice to also round it out. Allspice, cinnamon, and white pepper. The best to use if you want to add more flavor, but 
not want to intensify it. You know, for your grandma or whoever. Blackened seasoning. What I really enjoy with this is the rice concentrate, which adds sort of like a binding element to emulsify the sauce for the eggs and the shakshuka. So I'm not gonna torch these guys. I think they turn like a weird color when you torch them. Okay. I'm gonna torch the red guy. So now red pepper. Which we are gonna torch. I'm so excited for this part. My creme brulee torch. <laughs> creme brulee. It's a lot. It's the base of the dish. All right. Toast. Everything's married. We're gonna add the red in and then we're going to blend it all together. Should we get out the big boy? <laughs> Yeah, we should probably get out the big boy. Last process is... <laughs> Why <laughs> All done. Yeah. That's what you want it to look like. There we go. It's Maximize. kind of thick right now, but you want it to get a little bit looser because you're going to continue cooking it and poach the eggs into it. Right, we'll set that for five minutes and then we'll poach. Right. You just have to have it simmer at least five, ten minutes before so that all the flavors really marry. See, now it's thicker. Time to poach. I could, you know, break a yolk. The smallest one is the toughest one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so different chickens lay different color eggs? Yeah, I think it depends on like the color of their feathers and their earlobes, I heard. We just need the whites to go over and that's how you know the eggs are done. Damn, I wish we got the steam. <laughs> <laughs> Let me heat it up and let's do it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was bubbling. I was like, uh... <laughs> what would you swear on? My like, life. Yours? I can't swear on your life. Well, I'm I mean, like, if I was swearing life. on something, I would swear oh, on my okay. life. Oh, okay, I'm like, I can't swear on your life. Good thing I didn't. Good thing I didn't. <laughs> this thing just doesn't want to steam, but I don't want to overcook the egg, so I'm just going to take it off the heat. Sourced from Mediterranean Preserve. Really? No, the sea salt. Oh, that's so funny. Just like this dish. <laughs> you want the eggs to be salted, but like the sauce is sort of complementary to the saltiness and the creaminess of the eggs in the feta. So the trick to getting it not to stick on this thing is you just rub a little oil. Usually I do like avocado spray oil or whatever, but you can just rub it in with like whatever oil you have in your pantry so that it doesn't stick to this thing and you can easily slide it off. This is the best I'm gonna get it to look. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's right. really not that big of a deal. So now we're plated. We're ready to try it. We've never had this before. Let's see if that yolk is uh... that runny. Yeah. I doubt it, but oh, it's jammy. All right, I'll accept it. I think we mine is solidified. <laughs> we had to wait for this to cook because um, of the rice. On that. But other than that, it would have been way runny, way poached. I can poach an egg, I promise. <laughs> so when you like plate it like tower style and then you break the egg, it's supposed to like flow over the rice. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's not how the person who invented the dish <laughs> but that's what imagined you it, for. but that's what I imagined my version of the dish to look like. Well, you're making your version, so. <laughs> All right. Give it a go. <laughs> yeah, I'll try it. We might have to just stab, stab it. Stab it. Something. Yeah, that that's like industrially glued on there. I know, like calm down, feta's not that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just stab it. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Add to your please. Some people use Parmesan, but I like feta because it's a little bit drier than Parmesan. Parmesan is more like salty and nutty. Wow. It adds a whole another layer. That right? does add like another dimension. 
it gives it like a more creamy element to it. It's great. So normally like you cut the spice in half because there's literally no spice. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I cooked away all the spice. Ah, uh, I see. It's very mellow. Yeah, it's a very mild tasting. Yeah. No, I usually only add like a tiny bit of cayenne pepper and some people will like mention They're it. They're like dying. They're, They're like, like ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> No way. Have some more. This is good. <laughs> There's another plate. I already plated it. Where'd it go? Oh, you're right. This egg, solid. <laughs> Solidified. And when I touched it with the spoon, it like pushed back. I was like, this is not. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, you don't have to put eggs. You can put chorizo, chicken, um, chickpeas is a good one if you're vegan. Whatever you want. It's just like a regular curry sauce. You can add mm -hmm. it. It seems like really versatile. But traditionally, it's egg. Yeah. I, lo I love a, a great American breakfast. Pancakes, eggs, chicken. <laughs> That's great. But like in Israel, they'll have like lasagna, like Damn. soups, breads. They'll also have like omelets and stuff, but like mm. it's very heavy and savory and I really appreciated that. So I would be like loading up on the pasta like at 10 a.m. so I'd be ready. I feel it. I mean, this is very mild. I can't believe people are saying <laughs> it's too spicy. It had a little bit of a kick to it. It was tangy. <laughs> this one? Uh, yeah, definitely I've, I've made more mild ones than this. Really? When I do that, I amp up the spices, so it still has the same amount of flavor, but not like, it's not like spicy. It's just more like, oh, I can taste the cardamom in it or the mm. cumin. Yeah, it's interesting too that, you know, all those peppers that we use to like make as the base of the sauce didn't really like increase that spice factor. Yeah, bell peppers usually are pretty sweet. I expected right. the serrano pepper to be a little bit more spicy, but I don't know it if they're pick. in season or I didn't pick the right one, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love new experiences. Thank you very much. Of course, you know, anytime. <laughs> All right, bet. Um, I'll have you on for like another yeah. episode mm -hmm. one of these days. And Let me just get good at a different dish. It's fun. Food is so fun for me. It's a way to really connect with, like, honestly, like the energy of the earth. Like, nature grew this for me, for my friends to nurture us and give us nutrients and, like, allow us to live and have energy. And anytime I can be a part of that process for the people that I care about and for the people around me, I'm very grateful for that. So. Wow, that means a lot. Yeah. Good for me. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed <laughs> pouring my heart into this. I wish you guys could try it. I can taste the love in the <laughs> sauce. It's great. All right. I was going to rile myself up because it feel, it always feels like kind of cringy to do it. <laughs> yeah, I got to be like, oh. Take a shot before. Oh my like, God, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Want to take a shot? Yeah. All right. Ooh, this is the first time I'm taking a shot on the episode. This will be fun. Of course Some... with me. <laughs> it would be me. <laughs> you, were, you were really excited, so I was like, okay. Well, you know, he needed some some feel-good juice. I gotta ramp myself I up right now. I love it when my friends feel good, so. I hate gin and I hate Bombay. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Okay. All right. All right. Cheers. Wonderful. This has been an episode of Vanderkooks, and we'll see you next time.